content in nature itself. It is typical for biology, for more or less for biology, maybe physics. It's typical for chemistry. You can say the nature itself. If one is looking at the nature carefully and looking what kind of characteristics do the objects have, then you can say, oh, it can be arranged in a certain way, and everyone will follow. But if you are going in, in other countries, if you are going in the third world, people realize people there, they have another kind of structure. So it's not evident that really nature gives us the real structure. But that is the old idea that one is thinking. Classification systems are given by nature and we only have to protect them and their closed system. Now we know that knowledge is all the time is rearranging, it's reused, we are giving another meaning to it, and things like that. Um, especially in connection with artificial intelligence, when I'm speaking of a cognitive paradigm. It means how our brain is working, that might be a kind of model for structuring the information semantic uh, word nets, for example. And so, ah, that's the way our brain is working. And that might be the solution. But more and more we are thinking it's uh, not the, the least solution. It, it, there is a certain help, but in reality, we do not know how our brain is working. We have some ideas. In if you are asking people that are working in that field, they will say, oh, we have new, new findings and maybe we, we have to, I, I'm ex exaggerating, we have to restructure our computer. Um, the social and cultural factors they count. Or now one is detecting them more and more. And uh, the so sociology of knowledge does underline this. Sociologists, many sociologists are saying our knowledge is created by actions. When we are acting with other people, we are working with them together in work and environment, then we have to handle things. We must say, oh, this is a bottle. What is a bottle? It's meant to, the meaning of that water bottle or this of a hammer is comes up in a certain situation. If you are going in the, uh, in the jungle in Brazil, we are saying, look, oh, there's a bottle. We do not understand it. We say, look, there's something other. I do not know what it is. It's a bottle of water. And, and so um, everyone has a certain knowledge that's constructed by him together with the other people he is living with and he is discussing, discussing this. And this kind of knowledge gets structured, structured in, the, in the, beginning, the beginning of our life. And we are young, but then three years, five years, maybe somewhat later in the work environment. But in principle, it's beginning earlier. And uh, maybe you know the sociologist Bourdieu, and he's saying we have a habit that can't be changed. And that someone is coming from the working class. And we, he will make a career in the university, it might be very difficult. Yes, he must, uh, must understand the system of the university. And his parents didn't give him the skills to understand how to position himself. It's not only a question of the form, a question of, of working, of learning, a question to know what means what and how can I position myself in that field. I think that is uh, somewhat stressing out the uh, social environment of uh, knowledge. Okay, I will not stand long. There's a, uh, one uh, sentence. Um, our knowledge is built on the shoulders of giants. That expresses somewhat whatever we are doing is not created by us. It's dependent on our ancestors. It's dependent on 
the scientists, they have worked before on it. But yeah, nowadays when we are saying we have knowledge, it dates back 100,000 years back. It's tradition all the time. Only a short impression. How was knowledge created in medieval times by discussion? discussion about maybe they were one directed or they were more equal. Um, and nowadays we are sitting on the computer, but nevertheless it's the same idea and that is uh, most uh, fruitful. We try to work together. We must have the technical uh, skills to, to work together, one with the other one. And uh, if there is a, an idea of open sources, everyone can put in this information, take it out. That, that is what we are trying to rebuild. The same discussion situation we had in many old times. We are now trying to rebuild it with the, our computers. The wikis are the uh, uh, well, uh, Wiki, uh, Pedia is one uh, example for that. We are working together on a certain content and we are using it together. And it depends on this community whether they are structuring in a way that they can use it. That's what social software is uh, trying to do. Social software is maybe a wrong term, I would say. Collaborative software, something like that. Communicative software. And in the beginning, it was had more an aspect of entertainment. Science was thinking, oh, that it's not our stuff. It's for kids, for people that go exchange photos or music or whatever. But now it's becoming, it's detected more and more in the science. And they are saying, oh, there can be also expert audience. Then we can change our ideas according to that community and their interests. And it must not be general, it must be fitted to exactly their questions. And uh, they are different in the kind uh, they are trying to to share to, to share the, the knowledge of these people. Is there, is there one person active or all are active and so on? That's only the let's see, it's a plane where social software is written. And uh, maybe you know that you are sure that you know that term folksonomy is around. That is this idea of working together on stuff and even on semantic, even on the, the words, the terms, is working together and creating these terms and my hopes that these people are finding their language and that what they are trying to adjust. The question is whether it works in Zila High, very high uh, 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 definitions, folks, or ethno democratic. It's an idea. I'm not sure whether it works or it will not work in that way, but nevertheless, it's, that's a tendency. Oh. And uh, the 2.0 that I use is corresponding to the, the bad terminology I was saying of that 2.0. In principle, it does not mean so much. Uh, the web itself from the beginning was created as many to many systems. Everyone should participate should be able to put his information in. Everyone should be able to take it out, but it took its time to be realized, and we are speaking of that. To all, it's uh, a question to integrate different services that are, in principle, not fitting perfectly. In former days, one had to decide, am I interested in books, or are I interested in uh, Articles or are interested in meetings, and now it's all mixed together. Different services are in again. 
good for my flight and you know, order it and things like that. And map 3 in, in principle, map 3 is a question. Now, the so-called semantic map, the data map, and the question is how to combine all the different information we have to the map. No single record has all the information you need. It's distributed over different records and how to combine it that we get one knowledge out of different sources. The first thing is that we have a physical connection. And this is very, very ideal. There's one person in South America. And this person is communicating with someone in Spain. This one is communicating with someone in France or England. And that is very ideal and it's only technical we must have the technical needs for that, especially in science when we are working with many data and everything must be very quick. So we, we want to have it online, on, in time, all the information. But nevertheless, there is a semantic background. And what we need is to have the same background. That's the question, can we achieve it by controlling, by standards, or can it be like the collective tagging? And can we have a kind of standardization for this collective tagging? And that might be the solution. Well, at the moment, we can't see what's the solution. Only to, to give you an idea of the semantic web, you are getting your information from different documents, and you are combining together it in a logical way. And there's not that much below it of technical questions, but then the, the ontology, the logic of the knowledge that is on the highest level, and that is the real question we, we've not yet solved. And if one is speaking of interoperability, that's what we heard before from my colleagues, the question of interoperability, how can you use different systems? Not only the question, technical question. The syntax must be must be compatible, but they are coming with semantic dimensions. But over the semantic semantic dimensions, you have some pragmatic aspect. And I said, if you are having this using this bottle, if you are using a hammer, the other one must not only use the same term; he must have the same meaning must know what to do with it. Maybe if I'm asking for a hammer, maybe the X has the same function. It's, uh, I can't say that must be an X, it must be a uh, hammer, it must be named hammer. It must have the same understanding and there are many dynamics, there are local differences, there are differences in time, there are differences in habits and so on. All that must be calculated with. There's one initi initiative from IFRA uh, on the functional requirements for the bibliographic records. And they try to get a description that is more flexible so that it can adapt to the, to the user and uh, they have different entity relationship descriptions for bibliographic records. And in England, there is the Network Knowledge Organization System Server or Service. <coughs> and they discuss questions how to uh, get uh, a kind of working together of different knowledge organization systems. These are not only classification systems, as we have seen in the lecture before. And all this must be taken into account. How can this to be <coughs> built on, on the other, other systems. Oh, I made a mistake. And at the moment, what is interesting, what seems to be very fruitful, are the simple knowledge organization systems, the SCOS initiative, the just in art with a new uh, framework that is uh, from June. 2008, if you have the old one from 2006, you can so motivate. <laughs> they reformulated it. 
and they are also they are seeing that they have more they have not solved yet the problems. Uh, Peter, sorry, we have uh, here uh, Simone Lofi, that is an uh, extremely interesting... Uh, as the WD, we are deploying this also. Yeah, you will see on that topic later. Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Yes. Um, only, to, uh, only time to be to the idea. First, describe concepts in different schemes. And try to find out whether certain concepts different schemes are the same. And that is not uh, very easy. It's uh, mostly appropriate for the thorough to have some problems to apply it to specifications and they are just they are working on that question to bring in more structure between the concepts that are at the principle. Every concept is described within its scheme so that you can technically, automatically understand what it means and switch from one semantic point to another semantic point. There's a, an idea, it has to do with it, but not directly, it's uh, developed in, by a yeah, more or less power institute. The question of heterogeneity. If you are looking in a data, you are retrieving in a database, and you are retrieving feedback, first, maybe you can restrict it to scientific sources. When no scientific sources, then you will have a good outcome. But it's not all you are interested in. Maybe exactly for your question, you don't find anything. Then you can go in other sources. You can look in the Wikipedia, that has not the same standard. Not everything is scientifically certain. And uh, who knows who has written this article? Is it really the uh, right uh, source or not? But with some statistical procedures or deductive procedures, we can access other sources that are not as valid, but nevertheless might help you in a certain Situation. If you don't have good scientific information, you can go to the whole internet, to the deep web, and extract some information, but you must evaluate it by maybe statistical means. I need to give you a mayor. One minute. No, oh, okay, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I, I have my slide at the side. Um, uh, and, uh, recently, I took part in many expert discussions. What is scientific communication going on? What is this knowledge organization? Uh, and this one was very interesting. Munich in Germany, they discussed what do the uh, Does a scientist need? And really, they must have a background of information sources, of databases, and so on. But nevertheless, if you are really at the front, really at the front, you are a genius, then that is a question of your intellectual, your personal uh, efforts your information that you are gathering, your experiments that you are making, and no databases or whatever would help. Thank you very much. And there's uh, maybe you know Bradford's Law, uh, the work of Solar Price, and they are saying if you want to have one excellent article, you must give 100 articles, good articles, and to find 100 good articles, you must have 10,000 medium articles. And that means that means if you are really an excellent researcher, you can't depend on that what is we are getting in the internet. The internet or whatever database is for people that are trying to research 
on the mainstream level. <coughs> but as ex expert, you really must do your experiments yourself. You must meet with people, really understand what they mean, and so on. Only to say these are the limits that we, uh, that we have in the information sciences. Okay, there is only one aspect I will stick that on it. I, I think, and that came out in, in every discussion, we must know more about knowledge organization. What kinds of mean do we have? There is not only one mean, there is not one solution, democratic indexing or whatever, this or right, better than classification system and so on, descriptive lists and all, full text is better. We must really know what is suitable for which task. And there might be a very different task. And for one task, it's, it's good to have this uh, democratic indexing. For other tasks, you must have really a standardized system. And this community must work on this system. And to have more knowledge on this, to know what is going on with Google. I'm not, not saying only Google is best. I found what I wanted to have. Oh, I must know how it works. And I can say, oh, for some question this was good, but as I know that it works in that way, it's dropping out many other information. I can't use Google for everything. Okay, that will I skip. Uh, I'm coming to the end. And uh, you can connect information and you can bring it on a topic and then you will once again, there is also the, the, the question of history, how it develops. You have broken your knowledge and you are bringing it back to one point. And if you have a connection to another system, it is not the end. You are coming to new information and new, new problems. Thank you very much.